is in economics, he has passionately explored the economic impact of music and cultural preservation. His pioneering research has illuminated the transformative pandemic and 66% or 960 million traveled in 2022 post-pandemic. Of that figure, about 32 million traveled to the Caribbean pre-pandemic and about 28.3 million post-pandemic or 88.6%. And coming down closer to home, about 89,626, well, 89,626 to be exact, came to Dominica, right? And in, that was pre-pandemic 2019. That was the highest on record. And in 2022, 67.8% or 61,037 came. Furthermore, we see that travel and tourism accounts for about 10.4% of global GDP or 10% of global employment. In Dominica, those figures are about 19.3% of GDP and 25% of jobs. That's according to the World Travel and Tourism Council. So we can see that the Caribbean is a very desirable destination for leisure tourists, having outperformed the global stats for 2022 in terms of the rebound. And uh, there are different pros and cons or inhibitors to regenerating the tourism trade in each of the islands of the Caribbean. Among them uh, would be on-island experiences and products as well as access. Let's take a look at some of the trends. You can see the list here, and I'll make mention of a couple uh, based on research um, over the internet. We can see some of the uh, trends that have been collated. Uh, sustainable tourism is expected to grow at an annual rate of 10%, making up 20% of the tourism market by 2030. That's according to the UNWTO. And according to Global Wellness Institute, the wellness tourism market was valued at about 640 million in 2019 and is projected to reach 1.1 trillion by 2025. Adventure tourism is one of the fastest growing segments with a growth rate of 17.4% according to Allied Market Research. And Booking.com says 67% of travelers seek authentic experiences that enable them to learn about local culture. So while we talk about sustainable and responsible travel, and that is a key trend, travelers are also asking that we provide clarity in terms of what that means to us, so that they can determine whether that is aligned with what they perceive to be um, responsible and sustainable travel. And in that way, they can make a decision as to whether to come to your destination or whether to stay at your property. And there's also this double-edged sword that um, persists with sustainable tourism in that businesses are pledging to reduce their emissions, their contribution to emissions, and so are traveling less. But their travel, corporate travel, is what we want as a destination. Right? That provides us with sustainability for our livelihoods. And so if we're going to lose on the one hand from corporate travel, we have to be sure to make it up on the other end from a consumer perspective. If we look at how uh, Dominica aligns with uh, some of these trends, from a biodiversity standpoint, we can see that it attracts significant portion of eco-tourists. 73% of travelers consider visiting natural parks and reserves. That's according to UNWTO. And our Montauk National Park, a UNESCO World Heritage Site, showcases Dominica's biodiversity and natural beauty. Likewise, the story of the Waitikawuli National Trail resonates well with our visitors. According to Booking.com, 87% of global travelers want to travel sustainably. So many of our properties, like Grosley Bay, Jungle Bay, Fort Young, Hotel, um, Fort Young Hotel, Secret Bay, Coolibri Ridge, 
to name a few, had great success stories. When you look at uh, utilizing solar or wind power, you look at habit harvesting, you look at edible land, those have it at the time. Sustainable tourism, sustainable accommodations are preferred by 34% of the global travelers, according to Booking Bus. Like a wellness retreat incorporating yoga sessions, hikes, and organic cuisine, that will align with the wellness and adventure tourism trend. And according to Global Wellness Institute, wellness tourists spend 130% more than the average tourists. But we must also develop tailored packages for our marine and dive adventure or and, or, and our culinary and agro-tourism, to name a few. These are instances where we have a competitive advantage. According to Forbes, 84% of consumers value experiences as much as or more than the product. And certainly experiences with our indigenous people in Kalinago should be featured. So we must work on our offerings. Likewise, we need to collaborate with airlines for special promotions, making it easier and more affordable for tourists to reach Dominica. As accessibility is a major factor for 55% of travelers when choosing a destination, that's according to Focus Right. So marketing Dominica, the nature island, starts with the product and experience offerings. If we were to look at targeting, who do we target? And you can see the list there. Dominica, the nature island, strategically targets distinct consumer segments, such as adventure enthusiasts, wellness seekers, nature lovers, cultural explorers, luxury travelers, family vacationers, and sustainable travel advocates. By tailoring marketing approaches to each segment, the island maximizes its appeal and positions itself as a premier ecotourism and adventure destination, aligning with the diverse preferences and interests of travelers seeking unique nature-centric experiences. So those are some of the people that we target. Let's look at the market segmentation. First of all, we can approach it from a geographic perspective. Focusing on attracting tourists from nearby regions like the Caribbean, North America, and Europe, due to ease of access and shared ecological concern. But, you know, North America is a big place. So we focus on specific islands within the Caribbean, especially where access we, we tend to say follow the axis. And in the US and Canada, we look at places like Miami, the tri-state area, and Toronto to be uh, specific. And in Europe, we focus on countries like France and Germany. From a demographic perspective, we target in specific age groups interested in eco-friendly travel and adventure, like the millennials or middle-aged individuals. And certainly we know that target age groups for the French West Indies will be different and the UK will be different than, than the US. And so we need to tailor our messaging uh, to the specific segment that we're going after. Let's look at behavioral. Behavior. Targeting trend, um, travelers who um, enjoy outdoor activities such as hiking, bird watching, or scuba diving, and tailoring packages to match these interests. And lastly, we talk about psychographic, where we talk about lifestyles, tailoring marketing strategies to appeal to environmentally conscious and nature-loving travelers, showcasing Dominica as a pristine and authentic destination. So if we talk about some of the marketing strategies to leverage Dominica. We can design informative, visually appealing websites showcasing Dominica's natural beauty, eco-friendly initiatives, 
and venture opportunities and travel packages. We can create landing pages tailored to each target market segment, addressing their specific interests and needs. We can develop content strategy focused on ecotourism, adventure, activities, biodiversity, and sustainable travel in Dominica. We can publish blogs, articles, and guides highlighting unique experiences and attractions to capture the attention of the target audience. We can run social media ad campaigns on platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and X, formerly known as Twitter, um, showcasing our stunning visuals and videos of Dominica's nature-based attractions. Collaborate with eco-travel influencers to reach a wide audience and promote Dominica as a premier nature-focused destination. You can build on the traditional the email lists and come out with content on those emails uh, specific to, to those lists. Um, also on the traditional and focusing on things like newsletters and then focusing on SEO, search engine optimization to optimize websites. We can also produce specific videos on topics showcasing the island's diverse flora and fauna. We can utilize platforms like YouTube and social media to reach a broader audience. We can run pay-per-click campaigns on Google Ads, featuring on certain words that are germane to Dominica, like ecotourism and the like, nature island experiences. We can create ad variations for different market segments to tailor messaging accordingly according to their um, specific um, desires. We also want uh, user-generated content, so we want to encourage visitors to share their experiences on social media using specific hashtags. We can organize contests and giveaways to incentivize sharing and engagement. Organize virtual tours and webinars, something that we use quite frequently. And ensure that our website is mobile friendly right, and cater to the users who access information because increasingly more people are, access, are accessing travel information on their mobile device. And last but not least, I decided to put forth an innovative idea. Um, and so that would be a cruise ecotourism hub development. And it sounds like an oxymoron, right? Um, but it, whereas, it, I mean, it, it, it couples what, sh what people think is a mass tourism um, initiative being cruised with something that should be more sustainable in terms of low carrying capacity. But I think uh, it's a matter of how we do it can be successfully done based on how we combine the two. And one example I will give is the development of a bio park. That is a concept that if implemented, that is a concept that if implemented properly, I think can marry these two things and it can provide the benefits. Certainly, um, we look at one of the benefits uh, would be to encourage repeat visits which would bring about sustainability, but sustainability of a different meaning, that of economic development and better livelihood for stakeholders. Thank you much. Thank you, Mr. Piper, for your presentation. You gave us a very strong foundation to start off looking at the statistics and the numbers behind tourism, and I think that's very important to consider because we often, you know, we see tourism as just what it is on face value. We just look at the visitor arrivals, you know, we see the hotels and so on, but it's good to consider the numbers that, 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 that come from tourism in terms of visitor arrivals and so on. And so we're moving to our next panelist, who is Mr. Sam Raphael, who will be presenting um, to us this evening.
Thank you so much and good evening everyone. It's so nice that we don't have to do all the protocol things that the British taught us to do. Huh? Uh, no, I just want to uh, welcome all of you here and thank you so much for coming. Thanks for the invite. This is a very, very interesting and I think timely topic for us to address uh, here in Dominica. I am Sam Rafael, as the was introduced. I am uh, an entrepreneur. That's what I do, and the area of interest to me is tourism because that's the main interest in my region of the world, which is the Caribbean. That's our main industry, and uh, traditionally that industry had not been something that our Caribbean people had been deeply involved in from uh, entrepreneurial perspective, and so I thought it was something that maybe I could try to blaze a path for future generations, create maybe replicable models, and this is what I'll try to talk to you about. A lot of those models involve linkages, a more integrated type of, of tourism development. Um, you said largely in the, uh, in the Caribbean, uh, tourism uh, infrastructure is largely foreign only. Nothing wrong with that. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Uh, it, because we're all children of this planet. Uh, but in terms of uh, the, 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 the capacity building of the people, oftentimes that is left out because it's not just foreign owned but foreign managed. And traditionally, you have uh, the lower end jobs being what's retained by the local people without much opportunity for upward mobility. Unfortunately or fortunately, Dominica had not been blessed with the type of white sand beaches, flat areas for runways uh, that the other islands have been blessed with. We get too much rain. And so for the tourism brand of the Caribbean, Dominica was not seen as something where it's viable. We were protected by the mountains. Uh, we just, it was just too difficult to get to. And so we, as a result, have not had the type of traditional Caribbean tourism infrastructure, certainly not uh, in the, with sun, sand, and sea market, we're not as competitive as some of the other players. The environmental issues, I, I'm looking at uh, the beach on the bottom left, that is, uh, you know, a situation uh, on another jurisdiction. Uh, and you can see the environmental degradation that comes with the traditional model of tourism. So some say, unfortunately, we've not been blessed with this type of mass tourism, but maybe there is some good fortune in that and it gives us an opportunity uh, to, to do it better, to do it in a more sustainable way uh, with a lot of integration and linkages to the community to foster a more integrated uh, tourism development model. So the traditional economic model for hotels in the Caribbean uh, is you get the visitor revenue coming in, that's what we want, whether we get it in accommodations or other services, the spas, the restaurants, etc. And not just in hotels, but in other service providers in, on the island. And then a significant portion of that would go right out towards the importation of additional goods. In a more integrated model, as is being proposed with more linkages, you'd have the visitor revenue, it goes to the hotel and the establishment, and that money would go to the local farmers, it would go to the people that fish, it would go to the people that uh, perform, it would go to the people that produce all of those nice wellness things that we have on this island that we see all these young entrepreneurs producing. It would go round and around. And when you look at economics, uh, a dollar that comes into the economy, that circulates in the economy, is as valuable as a second dollar that comes into the economy. So if we can keep the dollar circulating, that means that we can multiply that dollar, sometimes once, sometimes twice, sometimes three times. 
So indeed, one dollar can work for us three dollars if we find ways to to keep that circulating. And there's my picture with uh, one of our lawyers turned farmer, no, turned uh, agritourism uh, entrepreneurs, Kondwani Williams. He was, he was my guest tonight and he was running late because he had to drop the guys off on the farm. And it's very interesting to see some of this we have developing organically in Dominica, some of these models that we need to highlight and showcase because sometimes we just need a practical examples, something with a low enough bar that uh, persons can see it work practically and they can try to replicate it. And Anadid and Kambwani, as well as several other, other persons are indeed creating, developing models that hopefully they can replicate and, uh, and we, can, we can, can have other people continue with and maybe even add some values. So our isolation has indeed created some great opportunities for linkages that some of the other islands maybe don't have as um, maybe as 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 robust as we do. Uh, certainly, um, in terms of the agriculture, food and agriculture, that's one of the. I mean, Dominica is an agricultural economy culturally, even though tourism has surpassed the foreign exchange we got from agriculture in the past. The people are still holding to the soil and the culture of the Dominican people is still, we still an agricultural people, even those of us that don't practice or engage in agriculture on a full-time basis. And there is, the isolation provides tremendous opportunities in that. Uh, it provides opportunities in value adding to agricultural products or other manufacturing. And we see a lot of this value adding. I mean, we've had so many examples over the years uh, with uh, the, pr the production of hot sauces, with the production of chips, with the production of sea moss. And I can go on and on and on where we've had value added uh, um, um, manufacturing to agriculture and also to other products like we see the soaps we see being produced in Dominica, uh, the, 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 the deodorants, you know, the bombs, all of this. We ha even have a wellness association and many of those members produce some, some very high quality things. We have a lot in the arts and crafts, certainly in our Kalanago community. They have certainly been the leader uh, in the production of some high value crafts uh, that, uh, that, that, you know, have tremendous value that, that, that persons would want outside of Dominica, visitors would want it. Uh, and uh, certainly even in energy, our isolation, and it gives us um, an opportunity to be innovators in uh, renewable energy, certainly. Uh, I, we, we have uh, had uh, fossil fuel for a long time that we've been dependent on. I know that uh, we've all uh, been united uh, because of the, the power situation that we've had. We, we're not very happy because of that as of late. Yeah, I see you all smiling. Um, but it gives us an opportunity on an island like Dominica to be less dependent on fossil fuel because we have, I don't know, any other Caribbean island, Eastern Caribbean island, that have actually hydroelectric energy. And we've had hydro as a major part of our energy uh, infrastructure for years. And we have a potential for solar. Some of the islands, other islands have the potential for solar. But we can be innovative in the way we do it and tie it to the grid. Even we have now geothermal that uh, we've been waiting for for some time. Some people don't like to hear about it, they want to see it, they want to see the geothermal light come on, but we do have tremendous potential in that area. So energy is very important to uh, economic development, and we do have, I think, in Dominica, tremendous potential. And a lot of the other islands, this is, I don't think this is just a Dominica-focused um, um, presentation.
presentation tonight. So a lot of the other islands, this, this is relevant to them too. And certainly the isolation gives us an opportunity to build our human resource capacity because, you know, necessity is the mother of innovation. And oftentimes we have to be creative and come up with stuff. Uh, when we build, when we, um, when, when we do so many things that we've got to come up with local stuff. Well, in the tourism model, certainly that is relevant to Dominica, that people would want to come to Dominica to enjoy. A local is what they want, and it does present tremendous opportunities there. The way forward with respect to to developing uh, these opportunities is to invest in the capacity infrastructure. And when we say capacity infrastructure, we mean the physical infrastructure and also the human resource capacity infrastructure. We need further investments in agriculture, in areas of greenhouses, you know, hydroponics. A lot of young people may feel they don't want to go through the back-breaking agriculture with the pickaxe and the hoe. Well, that is uh, of, of the past. Uh, now you can have very productive agriculture that can be very lucrative on very small areas with other technologies that we need to begin looking at and introducing, even fishing, for instance, you know, often now in Dominica we have to go out farther and farther to get fish because the reef fish, uh, we, we, are, we are not a coral island to begin with, but the reef fish that's been close by in many areas have been overfished. And so we need to look at technologies of fish farming, for instance, which is something that is very lucrative. We have a lot of water and we have a lot of other things that that we can, both fresh water and salt water, a fish farming, things that we can do. Uh, the, certainly the innovation and training of entrepreneurs is critical. And I, my last slide, I'll touch on some of the, some of the, 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 the what, what is needed to be successful in, in sustainable tourism, but is consistent with any type of business. And I think that's something that we often forget, and, and I, I speak over and over to audiences, and there's a reception, but it often doesn't translate into practical, you know, uh, it's, it's not a call to action sometimes. You don't see people getting up and doing it. It sounds good to us, but it's almost as if we're waiting for someone to implement it. And so I'd like to touch on some of the things, especially we have some young people here, that you guys are the future, and to encourage you guys to take up some of some of uh, some some of the information and to, to 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 you know because my generation is failing our generation is failing the older ones here and it'll be up to you to 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 take the baton so linkages should start from construction 